place is mind blowing. Did you know there's a place in Sicily shaped by legends and myths with a bustling market, giant sandwiches and a building that sums up the entire history of Sicily. This place is Ortigia, a small island in the eastern coast of Sicily, part of the city of Syracuse. The day we're discovering its beauty, its food and its history. Our first stop is Ortigia's colorful market where we're gonna go and try some street food but we're not gonna eat too much because we're saving ourselves for something special right after that. It's a pot for basically a corn shaped piece of paper stuffed with fried fish. Oh, my favorite street food. Actually, originally from Naples, but it became a thing also in Sicily. And it's just delicious. But we're here for the true star of Ortigia's street food. A sandwich so big, it's impossible to bite. Will it live up to the hype? Uh, we got two sandwiches. We got the artichoke special, which is this one. And it has artichokes and artichokes cream and salami. Oh, it has some meat today, so it's for making an exception. And the vegetarian special is this massive piece of rata cheese and a bunch of uh, grilled vegetables, tomatoes, and dry tomatoes, rocket, and pistachio cream. Let me see how's that. Mm. 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 I'm so happy right now. I was so hungry. Man. Oh, wow. Bye, Dan. That's the question. That's the challenge. I have one. No, I don't even have fun. <laughs> Okay, that's a sandwich. Yeah. Thank you. What's your opinion on Bordeaux? The sandwich I think it's nice to have it once, you know, like just to know, but I don't know, it's not really my thing. The bread is not really, it's just a regular bread, it's very dense. Um, I, I don't know, I don't think it's very good. Oh, for me, the sandwich was very good. I love a sandwich. I think we grew up eating sandwich. When yeah, you take a sandwich at school, obviously not that big. I'm still like struggling to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> and we, and we had, to, yeah, we ha I had one and a half, and the other half we had to save it for later. We also made an exception because one had meat. Actually, we did, we misread the menu. Oh, good luck digesting that. It's gonna take us ages. <laughs> When you get out of Ortigia Market, the first thing you see is the Apollo Temple and it's also the first landmark of Ortigia. It's one of the oldest temples of the Western Greek Empire and this dates back to the 6th century BC. It was one of the main places of worship. It's not the main place of worship for Greeks that lived in Ortigia. Ortigia and Syracuse were one of the capitals, one of the most important colonies, Greek colonies here in Sicily. Yeah, we stepped into one of those tiny, tiny streets. Even if the sun is high and hot, there's a nice breeze, so the temperature drops, and this is exactly why. A lot of Sicily and town have this kind of architecture, because it gets really hot, but people find refuge in the small streets like this. And there's also a cute door. I 
on the way from the Apollo Temple to the main cathedral, you'll find the fountain of Diana. Diana was the goddess of hunting. You can tell that she's wearing a bow. The fountain is facing south and it has four tritons, sort of like for male mermaids riding the seahorses and sea monsters. And there's also Aretusa, the nymph, being transformed into a spring. More on that with later when we visit the Aretusa Spring. It's a beautiful piece of architecture, big fountain. Don't miss it out when you're walking and visiting or teaching. And this is not just the cathedral, this place is mind-blowing. It's basically the history of Sicily in a nutshell. This was a worshipping site since the 8th century BC. Then the Greeks came and built a temple to the goddess Athena, the goddess of wisdom and justice, in the 5th century BC. Then it became a Roman worshipping site, and then the Arabs conquered Sicily and turned it into an Islamic worshipping site, and then the Normans also had it as a main place of worship and then after the earthquake of 1693 it also was rebuilt with the baroque architecture so it has all the timeline of the history of sicily it's absolutely neat and when we will go in you will also see the columns of the temple of Athena. it's still very well preserved so let's go and have a look inside it's also very hot and it's really nice and fresh in there This is what I was talking about, see the columns of the ancient Greek temple are still here and the Romans also used it as a worship and then they built a cathedral around it. If you would take Sicily as a building, probably this and the main cathedral of Palermo would be it. They have all the history of Sicily between its four walls. And here you can see the Aretusa spring, which is very peculiar to have a freshwater spring so close to the sea in an island. And so it uh, it's always has fascinated the imagination of people and the Greeks came up with this myth and according to the myth, the Aretusa spring was the nymph Aretusa who got a bit too many attentions from the god Alpha. She had to run away from him because he was basically stalking her. She came to Artigia and she asked for help to the goddess Artemis or Diana, which we saw earlier in the fountain. And Diana, to help her escape, Altheo turned it into a spring. So this is Aretusa. You also see these are papyrus. It's the only place in Europe, together with another place in Sicily, in Fiume Freddo, that has papyrus. And this is Castello Maniace, which is a 13th century castle built by Frederick II, Federico II di Sveria, one of the greatest kings of Sicily of all times. And it's always been a military outpost because of its strategic position right at the tip of the island to warn and protect the island from attacks coming from the sea. A fun fact, if you go into the castle, you'll see some stones have a name of the worker or the name of the quarry where they were extracted from. And this was a way to keep track of payment or to pay the workers of the queries there are amount based on the actual number of stones that were placed in the castle. It's also a few steps away from the university and here's a nice budgeting tip. If you want to have a drink or eat something out maybe look around the university area because the prices there are more catered towards students and less towards tourists. Mm -hmm. 
you can visit Otija in more or less half day. To spend the other half, you can go to the Neapolis in Syracuse, or you can go to Northern Marzamemi and to know how to do that. We left the video here about that. It's a beautiful part of Sicily. Remember to subscribe because we're gonna do more videos about Sicily and soon China.